Hello and welcome to Digital Goulash. My name is Chucky and today we're going to take Photoshop Elements and create this great motivational poster. Now first thing I have to tell you is, is that the layers palette is usually not on the left hand side but I've moved it so that you can see it in this video. Let's go ahead and get started. Go to the file new, select blank file. With a width of 24 inches and height of 18 inches and resolution of 300 pixels per inch we're going to select OK, or if you are creating a portrait type, let's go ahead and use 18 by 24 and select OK. Now you probably have a black, a white background actually, and we need to convert that into black. So we're going to use a Command I, and what that's going to do is it inverts the color. Now if you're not familiar with the command keys, I'm going to go ahead and put those in written instructions and link it to the description under this video. Now what we need to do is we need to create some guidelines for the picture to go. Now we need to drag those guidelines from our ruler. But you may not see your ruler, so let's go ahead under the view and turn our rulers on, which is right there. We're going to drag our first one, click and hold from the ruler and drag it down. And on the left hand side you'll see that it shows you what position it is on the ruler. So that one's going to be at 2 inches. Let's go ahead and click again and drag this one down to approximately 14 inches right there. Drag from the left hand ruler, click and hold, and go over to approximately 22 inches. And last but not least, click drag and hold and put this one at about 2 inches. Now that's where the border of our picture is going to go. Now we need to actually create the guides for our picture. So let's go ahead and do it again. Click on the ruler and let's go a half an inch in. So I'm going to go and I'm going to do about two and a half inches right there. Click and drag down and I'm going to take this one to about 13 and a half inches right there. Drag one in from the left hand ruler and make this one approximately 21 and a half inches over here. And last but not least, let's go ahead and make this one about two and a half inches over there. So now we have our guides. Now we need to get a picture in here. So let's go and go to File, Open, and select one of the pictures that we've already taken that you think would be a great one. Now I picked this particular picture. I took this one in Rhode Island. I thought it would be a wonderful picture on somebody struggling with something. So let's go ahead and click back on our black image right here and in the project bin you'll see that the pictures opened up we can click and hold it'll draw a blue box around that and we can drag that onto our picture right there now it'll create a new layer automatically so what I'm going to do is go over to the move tool which is this one over here and then I'm going to click and move this so that what we want to do is this inside guide I want to be able to use the picture that's on the inside guide right there so now I need to resize this. If you already have a bounding box showing, it'll be a dotted line right there. If you don't have one, go into your options bar and click this one right there and it'll show you the, your bounding box right there. And I'm going to grab this corner until it turns into a diagonal double headed arrow. And I'm going to go ahead and resize this to approximately the size that I want. And I kind of like it right about there. I don't want to chop his feet off. You can always use the arrow keys if you want to just nudge this just a little bit. And there we have it. When we're happy we can either hit the enter key or the green checkbox right there. Now we need to crop this and make it a little bit smaller. So we're going to go over to the rectangular marquee tool which is right here. And we're going to draw a box right here. Now mine is automatically snapping. If yours didn't automatically snap inside those grid lines that we created or the guidelines that we created you need to go over to view snap to and guides right there now that we have this selected if we hit the delete key it's going to delete everything on the inside what we need to do is we need to delete everything on the outside so do a command shift i and what that'll do is that'll reverse the marching ants and then hit delete you can also use a control shift i now to get rid of the ants we're going to hit command D to get rid of those and it's starting to look pretty nice already. Now we're going to create another rectangular marquee right on the outside where our other guides are right here. Now we need to stroke this image to a color. So what I like to do is I like to pick my eyedropper tool and pick a color that's on the inside somewhere here. I'm going to pick a color that is this 
particular parachute right there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let's pick a different color right there. Now pick a real nice light color right there. And then we're going to go over to our edit and we're going to stroke the selection. We're going to stroke it to the inside and we're going to stroke it 15 pixels. We're going to select OK. You probably didn't see anything happen. Let's go ahead and hit Command D and get rid of our marching ants and you still can't see it because the guidelines are covering up. So I'm going to show you another command or control key and that is command or control semicolon and what that's going to do is that's going to get rid of our grid lines temporarily. It's going to hide them. So we're looking pretty good so far. So I'm going to hit command or control semicolon again and that's going to put that back. Now we need to add some text underneath there but we need to center the text. So I'm going to go from the left hand ruler I'm going to click and hold, I'm going to drag this, and I'm going to put it on 12 inches. Now, if you're using a portrait size one, you're going to have to put that at approximately 9 inches. Now we're going to go over to our text tool right here, and we're going to make sure that our green is still in the foreground palette. You can see that up there. And we're going to pick a nice serif type font. Now, I've been using the one over here called uh, Copper Plate right over here. I'm going to use the one that says copper plate and I'm going to pick about 100 points right there and then I'm going to click down here. I'm going to click just below that particular border box. So I'm going to click somewhere around here and then I'm going to type the word drive D-R-I-V-E and there we have it. Now it's not looking really nice right there. I'm going to go ahead and double click this layer and that's going to highlight my drive right there. I don't think that looks very good. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try a different one. I'm going to try Copper Plate Gothic Light. Uh, that's a little bit better. I do like that one. The only thing I don't like is, is that the letters are all scrunched up right there. So we're going to have to put about five spaces in between each letter. So I'm going to click on between the D and the R and I'm going to put approximately five spaces. One, two, three, four, five. Then go and repeat the process between each one of the letters. Okay, now that we have drive in there, I also want to expand this a little bit. So I'm going to click the green checkbox right there. And then I'm going to go to my move tool. That's going to bring this bounding box back. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this center handle. I'm going to expand this just a little bit and make sure that the eye is still in the center. When I'm happy, I'll hit the enter key and there we have it. So there we have our letters right there. But if you can see on our original photo, these motivational posters usually have little dots in between each one of the letters. So I'm going to show you how to put those dots on there. Now, we're, this little bounding box is getting on my nerves now, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to undo the bounding box. Now we need to make another guide, so I'm going to go ahead and up here at the top, I'm going to grab hold of this and I'm going to drag this down. Now I really can't see too well, so if you use the Command Plus, we can zoom in a little bit. As you can see, wow, that's a pretty sharp picture right there. We're going to zoom in just a little bit right there. Bring that up just a tiny bit. There we go. You want to have it just a little bit above the center part of the R right there. Now what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you another trick to make circles. Let's go ahead and go into our layers palette and create a new layer right there. And then go over to our elliptical or rectangular marquee and let's turn it into an elliptical marquee by clicking and holding and changing it to elliptical marquee. We're going to go into the options bar, pick fix size, and we're going to change this to 30 pixels by 30 pixels. And then what we're going to do is we're going to click right on the line in between the D and the R and then we're going to fill that with green. Right now green is in our foreground. We need to swap that so that it's in our background. We can use these little arrows right there or we can hit X on our keyboard and that'll also swap it. The reason we do that is I'm going to show you a nice trick and that is command backspace or command delete and what that's going to do is that's going to fill that with their background color. Once again let's go ahead and click in between the R and the I, make an elliptical marquee and then hit command backspace or command delete. Do it all the way over in between all of these letters. And there we have it. Now hit command D that gets rid of the marching ants and then 
command semicolon you got it and you can see that the dots are right there now if you want to zoom this back out a real quick command shortcut is command zero and that will put that back right there and as you can see we're starting to look good already let's go ahead and hit command and semicolon and that will put the guides back again now what we need to do is we need to make a line right here so we're going to need another guide so let's go ahead to the top ruler there grab that and drag that just below our letters right there and what we're going to do is we're going to make a line so we need to be in this to be green again go ahead and swap those back with the X and then we're going to pick our paintbrush tool right there make sure that you have a nice hard paintbrush started right there and then change that to approximately 15 pixels now what we're going to do is somewhere in between the D and this guide right there on this particular guide we're gonna click and then we're gonna hold the shift key we're gonna go in between the E and the other guide on this line and we're going to shift click and there we go and that created a line now the only thing is is that you can't see the line so let's go ahead and hit the command and the semicolon as you can see the line is there command semicolon once again to get our grid lines back and the last thing we're going to do is add another set of text right here we're gonna click on the text this time we can't use I shouldn't say we can't but it would look nicer if we use something that had a lowercase to it so I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down and find something that's kinda nice just anything really uh, Palatino is nice and then I'm gonna change this to let's say about 42 pixels and then I'm gonna swap the colors to white right there and there we have it Oop, that didn't take let's try again 42 pixels let's see if that takes this time okay there we go and now what we're going to do is we're going to click on this line the center line uh, make sure that your center justified right there we're going to click on this line right there and then it's going to create a new text layer we're going to type in the words you either run oops the and I'm capitalizing every word except for the word or you either run the day or the day runs you right there and we're happy with that we can click the green checkbox now this kinda seems a little bit bunched up as well so I'm gonna go over to my move tool make sure that my bounding box is checked right there and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna drag this to the left a little bit and I'm gonna go ahead and drag this to the right a little bit maybe like that and something like that and hit enter and there we go let's go ahead and do the command or the control semicolon and let's get rid of our bounding box right there that seems like this is a little bit too close to this line so as long as I'm on the text tool right there and I'm on my move or the text layer and I'm on my move tool right there I can go ahead and I can grab hold of this text and I can just move it down just a little bit until I like it and there we have it. We have our motivational poster with our picture in there, our border, our actual motivational saying, and then the little subtext that goes underneath it. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my videos. Give me a thumbs up, give me a like, and pass this link on to your friends. Cheers!